Hey everyone, welcome in this beautiful design studio from Manila, in the Philippines. And today is the 14th day already of our awesome web challenge. And as I promised yesterday, we will be more talking about the responsive design and the opportunities you can have in there. Why should you even pay attention or even think about the opportunities in the mobile devices? Well, if you watched the video yesterday, you already know why is it so important. If you didn't, you should know that most of the people, or most of the majority of the people, are actually firstly using their mobile device if they are going on some web page. So it's super important and it's a huge market you can approach via your mobile device. And today I prepared a few opportunities, interesting, interesting facts you can actually use on your web page so that you can attract even more customers via the mobile device. First opportunity is about actually your menu. Yes, just the menu. I have this little thing which will help me. And I'm talking about the menu, it's called usually hamburger menu. And the thing is, the thing is, how do you have it on your device? Because it could be on the right side or on the left side. The question is, what is better? Try and actually ask a few people around you what they prefer. It's kind of interesting. Because some people are actually holding the phone like this and because they are right-handed, for example, so it's much easier for them to click on the right top corner. But some of the people are actually holding the phone like this and they are using their left finger to tap on it. So it's maybe easier to tap on the left. There is no right or wrong answer. Basically, you should just do some A-B testing and thanks to these data, you should decide. Once again, there is no right or wrong answer if you should put the hamburger menu on the right or on the left side. In some applications, it's even happening that the menu is on the uh, downer part of your screen. And it's on the, even like if you imagine Facebook app, uh, the Facebook app has the menu on the bottom right part. So these even could be different. And you can use these added menus even in your web pages or if you have a web application. That could be also quite interesting and useful for the users. Another thing is if you have an eShop. Sometimes it might be better for you if you have their um, a basket or a login and the menu could be on the other side. So that could be even better and it's more worth to test it. So be careful with this one. Next interesting thought about the hamburger menu is just the way your designer put the menu on your on your mobile device. I believe that you already saw that they could be used like a three lines. That's actually the reason why it's called hamburger menu. But another thing is if you put it like in the round uh, circle or square, rounded square. But the best thing is if you actually write there the word menu. Not everybody actually still, I know it's 2019, and a lot of people are aware of the fact that the hamburger menu is actually the menu, but it's not the general thing. Not everybody knows. And it depends a lot about your target group. If your target group are younger people, in that case, it might be quite useful just to use the three lines and they will be 100% aware of the fact what it is. But if your target group are the older people, and older, I mean 30 plus, they don't have to be aware that much that really there is the menu. So be careful with this. If you just write the menu, it could work much better for you. Also take into consideration how important is the content in the menu. If you have the most important content somewhere in the menu, so that you actually need people to click on the menu and continue within the menu, write there a menu. It's 100% better. How are you used to hold your phone? Do you hold it like this, like a portrait? Or do you hold it like this, 
like landscape. This is actually another interesting fact and information for you. Because according to the Scientia Mobiles report, 94% users are holding their mobile devices as a portrait. So just 6% are using their mobile devices as a landscape. And let's stick to this a little more, because this is actually kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, we cannot generalize this, that people will never use the landscape or only 6% are using the, uh, their mobile devices as a landscape. The important thing is to realize that if the users are watching uh, YouTube, for example, uh, they, if they play the video, they are not using the portrait version. They are actually twisting their phone during the process to have the better view of the whole video because we have this huge screen, so why not use them? So if you are having some videos or courses on your web page, you should pay attention to playing the video itself, there might be happening that they, turn, uh, that they turn their device. Another thing is, on the social networks, such as uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and these kind of social networks, where the people are used to watch the videos on the portrait. This is, again, different. Why? Because it's much easier to scroll. So actually, people and the commercials uh, started to be prepared for the users to have it as a portrait because they knew that they will be too lazy to twist it and if they will shoot the video as a portrait, the video is, will be again bigger so they will see it much better. So there are two different approaches. So keep this in mind when you are thinking about their content on the web page. You know what, actually, take your phone in your hand right now and try to check some web page or whatever and see how you are actually holding your phone and which fingers are you using to tap on the phone. The interesting fact is that at least 50% of the users generally are holding the phone differently than you do. At least, it could be even more. There are actually some studies um, and uh, they found out that uh, I believe 49% are holding their phone like this. And they are using just the, they are holding it in one hand and they are using uh, their right thumb. That's me. <laughs> but that's not the only thing how they, are, how they can hold their phone. Another way is that uh, they are uh, holding the phone with the both hands and they are using both thumbs. Different approach is that uh, they are holding it again with the both hands, but the one thumb is on the left top corner and the right thumb is on the bottom right corner. And they are using their device like this. This is interesting, isn't it? And the last one, and the last one is that they are holding their phone in the one hand and they're actually using their another hand, the finger, uh, to actually search and use the phone. So what about you? Did you try? Did you test it out? How are you holding your phone? Why am I actually talking about this? The important thing is that you cannot see through your fingers. Imagine if you are writing something or if you are using your thumb. For example, me. As I said, I'm using just the right thumb, right? So if I'm using the right thumb, I cannot see the content below my thumb. So basically, in the, this left part of the corner of my phone, I cannot see the content all the time. So and now what does that mean? If you are having some content in here, and as I mentioned, 49% of users are holding their phones like this, and your most important content is here, they cannot see it. So that's super important to move the content further or in the middle. Because you could saw that the, most of the time the fingers, the thumbs, were on the sides. So the easiest approach to this is to put the content in the middle of the screen. Because in that case, the people cannot block the screen with their fingers. So that's super important. Check that out. How does it look like on your web page on the phone? 
and of course use the data from the heat maps. I believe that you do have them set up. If you don't, check the previous videos and just use it, take the data and take the information. They are quite useful. Last but not least, it's actually to realize how big are fingers of your users. I know this sounds super weird, but it's actually quite important because different people have different sizes of fingers and your web page should be easy to use for everybody. So if you put like two tiny buttons next to each other, it's super hard to press it for someone who has bigger fingers. So my recommendation for you is actually to use a big action buttons. Don't be afraid to use some spaces in between them and between text. You will make it much more easier for your users to click on everything. I believe you found some useful information today about these little devices. So use them. Uh, I believe and I hope that you have these 20 minutes right now to actually check your web page, how are you doing with your mobile devices, with your web page, and make some improvements, use these opportunities, use it, go ahead, text your uh, IT developers and everybody who you need to, uh, to implement it, and I will be looking forward to see you tomorrow, and have a nice rest of the day, give a thumb up if you like the video, subscribe if you want to know more information, and uh, other videos, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a nice rest of the day.